here in Bucharest. Bucharest, where there are so many people out, so many people eating ice cream, walking their dogs, getting lunch. My God. It's definitely a vibe out here. I'm already so, so surprised. Like my first impression was it's super clean. Feels almost like a uh, Western European city. Yeah, it does. People also, the way they dress and the kind of the mixed like styles and cultures here, it feels very like metropolitan, big city kind of vibe. Uh, yeah, they, they like to let us the, the entire boulevard, which is the one of the main boulevards here in Bucharest. So they block it off for the weekend. Exactly, only for, for the weekend, yes. He disliked Bucharest because Bucharest was looking more like a village than a modern city. So this is St. George Church, and we're really lucky that we're here on a Sunday because we're getting to witness a service. So behind us are the candles that you can light for somebody who is living, but you can also light for somebody who's passed, hoping to give them more peace in the afterlife. Okay, wow, did not expect this. You have this big, beautiful building here, and then all the way down here, you have all these water fountains. So cool. I didn't expect for there to be so much beautiful architecture here, but the buildings are amazing. They're all very French style. And then you got the mix, that little bit of mix of communist buildings, you know, here and there that are honestly pretty ugly. But how they've been able to maintain these buildings, like another one right here is just unreal. All right, so this is why we do walking tours, so we can actually learn about the significance of buildings, right? Because if you just get to a new city, you don't know much, maybe you've read a blog, you're walking around, you don't really know like what actually happened there. So I was just thinking how beautiful and massive this building is. We just learned it's the parliament building, but it represents something extremely negative to the local people here. It's one of the biggest buildings in the entire world, standing at 84 meters high, 7,000 rooms, 450,000 square meters. The parliament palace began not with some architects set over a drawing board, but with a tragedy. On March the 4th, 1977, the mother of all earthquakes hit Romania. Registering 7.3 on the Richter scale, it shook streets for a full minute, bringing apartment blocks crashing down. So Ceausescu now had a chance to rebuild his own socialist utopia. It was the start of a journey that would soon drag Romania to depths of suffering its population had rarely known. Ceausescu ordered the destruction of more than 10,000 homes and forcibly evicted more than 50,000 families. It should never be forgotten what this building is. It is Europe's largest and youngest symbol for centralized control and authoritarian communism. A constant reminder of how real it is to be led by people who live and breathe. Do as I say, not as I do. And the only reason they've kept this building is because they did the math and they learned that it would be more cost effective to just keep the building and actually keep building it rather than knock it down. We just finished our walking tour here in Bucharest and it was 10 out of 10 experience. They do a really good job here. Her English was great. They even have a little microphone, which we so appreciate because sometimes, you know, they're giving you so much history and you want to be able to follow along. But we learned heaps. They have a very dark past with uh, Dracula. Dracula is known to have come here from Romania. His real name is Ivan the Impaler. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what does impaling mean? What would he do to the people who would cheat and steal from him? You grab big stick. You shove it up the anus, aka the innards, and it would come out right here, uh, this part of the back, and you would purposely avoid all the internal organs so that they wouldn't die immediately. They would suffer from like four to five hours. Vlad III, later known as the Impaler, is by far the most famous Romanian historical figure. In his homeland, he's a national hero, seen as a champion of independence and resistance against Ottoman expansion. But outside Romania, he's mostly perceived as the psychopath and sadist that inspired Bram Stoker's Dracula. But outside of that, we also got to see some beautiful churches, and then we got to walk through the old town. We're walking around the old town now. Hi. Hello again, hello. hello. Their old town feels a little touristy. I think, again, you're gonna have overpriced restaurants. Like, you know some old towns, like they've definitely propped yeah, it up. All old towns. But I feel like there's a lot you can do and see in that area. But this place does feel very much like Paris. It was nicknamed Le Petit Paris, the little Paris. 
And it's no surprise because half the time I think I am in France. It feels <laughs> like I'm walking the streets of like Paris or some major city. You have this kind of like French mix where they became really obsessed with the French style architecture in the 1800s and that's why we're seeing it everywhere. It's clean as well. That's something that was like blew my mind is how clean it is here. The coffee shops and the food scene here are epic. Look at the color and freshness of the salad. How's yours, dude? Fantastic. I think this is like five bucks. Well, we've been craving it. Ooh, we got a shrimp burger. That thing looks fire. Dude, the bun. Well, what'd you know? <laughs> We're out here in Bucharest having poke, one of our favorite things to eat in the world. They got it all. I think it's sometimes rare in some of these Balkan countries that you can get really good quality well, coffee. We've been sort of lucky as of late. Like Bulgaria had great coffee. Yeah, So they far did. we can tell Romania's got really good coffee too. Their language is also Latin. It's a Latin language as well. So that makes it different because it's not Slavic. They don't use the Cyrillic alphabet. I think the place I've preferred in the last two years is at home. I'm in a area of the city, even in the city of Feleac. So yeah, that's, a, that's day one, guys. Uh, so let's see yeah. what the next day has yeah. to offer. And what are we doing tomorrow? We're going on a castle tour. <laughs> We're going to see where Dracula hung out. This disturbing man. <laughs> what shaped this man? Peter, wake up. Before we go check out Dracula's castle, we'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Brooklyn Bedding, for supporting our channel and for making the most comfortable beds that we've ever owned. Because let me tell you, jumping from Airbnb to Airbnb has given us a very unique perspective on beds. We've literally slept on hundreds of beds. We're bed specialists now. In Brooklyn Bedding, it's up there. Along with this other one we slept on in Middle Earth, but Brooklyn Bedding's up there. Oh yeah. And what we love most about this company is they actually take the time to listen to people. They've got a mattress for everyone. Whether you run hot and want a cooling mattress like me, are you a back sleeper, a side sleeper, or do you have a little bit more cushion for the pushing and need a little bit more support? Or maybe you're looking for a mattress that's super comfortable but also super light to fit in your RV. They've got the technology and most importantly, the desire to help each person find the right mattress for them. And to make that process super easy, they offer a 120 night sleep trial, free shipping, and a 10 year warranty. So if you're looking to upgrade your mattress, head over to brooklynbedding.com slash travel and use our code onrolltravel to save 25% off. Yoo! All right, let's see if our driver smokes a cigarette every time he stops. Okay, we are the first ones this morning <laughs> for a driving tour to see multiple castles in Romania, Transylvania specifically. We're so stoked because very rarely are we the first people to get picked up. Yes. But when you are, you pick your seats, dude. Yeah. You know we VIP front seat, AC blasting my nostrils, dude. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, well, all right. let's learn some shit about Dracula and vampires. Yeah, but <laughs> We've made it to Pelish Castle. We just went through the town of Sinai, which is super charming. And look at where we are now. This area is so beautiful. This is like a beer house. Here, this is like villas and a hotel. They have a gift and souvenir shop. We're having coffee here. And this is what everyone's here for. This is the castle. But unfortunately, we can't go inside the castle today because it's Monday and they're closed. It's the one day a week that they use to like do maintenance and whatnot, so. This is actually the best place where we can frame the entire castle. So this was actually the summer residence of the first king of Romania, King Carl I, 1866 to 1914. The castle's construction started in 1873. It was completed in first version in 1883, but it had continuous add-ons and upgrades till 1914 when the king passed away. made it to Brasov and first impressions this town is stunning I didn't realize how German inspired everything was like it's it's pretty Deutsch right now this is like <laughs> like I didn't expect you know coming from Bucharest that was so French, French 
now you have this German town, uh, well obviously German, now Romanian obviously. Yeah. It's cool, I mean this is definitely making us want to see more of this country and come back. And I think just like road tripping this country and actually town hopping, you get to see so much more. But anyways, we're here for a couple hours which is really cool because they're giving us plenty of time to actually experience this town. That's something I've appreciated on this tour so far because a lot of these kind of day trips we're doing, we feel like super constrained, yeah, strict schedule. Yeah. But this one's not like that. So we're gonna grab a bite to eat. Where are we eating, dude? We're eating at Le Petit Bistro, a French yeah. bistro. I don't sound Romanian. Well, this is it. Wow, thank you. Wow, look at that. Poached eggs, smoked salmon, avocado, look how, look at that croissant. Boop. I want to suck your blood. We've made it to Bran Castle, otherwise known as Dracula's Castle. I will suck your blood. And I'm curious to see if this is just one big tourist trap. Or if it's actually legit. We shall see. Lots of little stands and things that you can buy. I've already seen a lot of Dracula themed items. Yeah, hundreds of people in line. Do we get a fast pass? <laughs> this is fast. Just scanning tickets. We got lines on lines on lines. This kind of feels like Disneyland. Oh, okay, this is cool. This is a secret passageway. Change your mind. Come back. No, no. <laughs> and uh, this was found when they were doing renovations. So this is where they would have escaped to come to the top if they were ever, if they were under fire, under attack. That was so far the coolest thing. That was really cool. Oh, more crowds. You can see the street. Romania is so green. I think that's what I like the most. I was just hoping it's all the densely forested it is. Yeah. So many trees everywhere. Honestly, a big tourist trap, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. But I will say, seeing it from the outside is enough. Yeah, no, the outside is amazing. Right, I mind. think I the surrounding mind. town. Get out of here. Get out okay. here. <laughs> I changed my mind. I think the surrounding town here, that's what I'm most excited to see. And maybe admire the actual front of the castle a little bit more. That's where we're going to go now. The backdrop of this place is what's most beautiful. It's stunning. And the region is incredible. So I yeah. would say there's no need to really pay for the inside of the castle unless you're like obsessed with the folklore of it all. Yeah. Which in, in our opinion, know. for me, like there's just so many people here. We're also here in August when it's the busiest time. And so, yeah, the majority of what we just did was really waiting in line, just standing there waiting. This is freaking crazy. Walnut pretzel. Sausage stick and cheese filled thing. <laughs> what, what candy does that taste like? That's weird. Mm. Good though. Mm. It kind of tastes like pancake with syrup. It's actually pretty good. Oh, wow. This has definitely been the highlight of today. Wow. So pretty. <laughs> we just walked down to Piazza Uniri and they're gonna have a big fountain light show tonight. It's gonna be crazy. Yeah. And it happens like only on the weekends during summer months. I think it's like a kind of like an automated digital thing. more fireworks way behind us that way or fireworks we have more <laughs> fountains it feels like fireworks dude the kids are just going nuts oh my god Whoa. i love that the city puts this on like yeah. it's just it brings everyone together 